Guys, after years of searching, I finally found the secret to everlasting motivation. As it turns out, there is a type of motivation that helps us finally stick to those pesky habits that we know we should be doing, but never actually follow through on. Chances are, like the old me, you only know about positive motivation, aka just imagining all of the benefits our ideal habits and goals would give us. So when we use positive motivation, the reason we're taking action or doing anything is to move toward our dream life, but it never actually seems to work. We kind of end up getting stuck in this endless trap of making vision boards and watching motivational videos and reading self-help books, daydreaming about our perfect higher self, and just constantly trying to motivate ourselves even more with a beautiful tomorrow that ultimately never comes because it always gets pushed well to tomorrow. This whole time though, We've been completely forgetting about another kind of motivation that is not only even more powerful than positive motivation, but when used properly and in a healthy way, leads to actual change and a two times higher success rate. And that motivation is... Oh. <laughs> 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 Fear. Fear motivation is the internal process of moving ourselves away from what we don't want. So basically, we're running away from something rather than running towards something. So just like yin and yang, heaven and hell in religions, the white wolf and the black wolf analogy, there are two sides of the same coin of motivation. Fear is one of the most powerful motivators because it makes us uncomfortable right now. Self-preservation kicks in, we get that adrenaline rush, and we feel compelled to take action today in order to reduce or eliminate that discomfort. Um, excuse me? Uh, uh, yes? Uh, why do we need to add a healthy dose of fear on top of positive motivation? Well, unfortunately, positive motivation frequently is simply not sufficient to drive us to start changing our behavior immediately. In fact, studies show that visualizing our dream life can actually lower our energy levels and encourage procrastination and result in poor levels of achievement. If we become extremely convinced that our dreams will absolutely happen and at some perfect moment we'll start our new lives, we feel comfortable just the way we are today because in the back of our heads, we believe that there's all always tomorrow and our future perfect self will take care of all our goals. Right now, there is no pressing need for immediate action. So school deadlines, chore requests from our parents, or instant gratification from Netflix or social media will always win. And that's why it's crucial to cultivate a healthy dose of fear of staying the same or not taking that action today because it makes our goals have a sense of urgency and become elevated from an optional should to a priority and a must. Fear itself is a tremendously powerful lever. And when I say a lever, I mean a chemical lever. Dopamine, this molecule of craving, and epinephrine, this molecule of motivation and agitation. The fact that those are such close cousins is never going to be untangled. And doing a lot of psychological work to try and just move towards things from a place of love and desire, I think is, is a terrible mistake. We are wired to be motivated when afraid. And, and we can leverage that. It's what can get us out the door. Okay, but how do we cultivate a fear that leads to action? It's pretty simple. We need to educate ourselves about the negative consequences consequences of not completing our desired habits or actions today, and also about the longer-term negative results that will come about if we keep postponing the action or habit. And this information must make us feel very uncomfortable with our current comfort zone and want to immediately start moving in the opposite direction. How do we educate ourselves? Well, by conducting research that leads to genuine deep beliefs in the validity of what we read. While stories from individual people can help help supplement that, it's often just not enough because we can always chalk it to, well, that person had that experience, but I'm not like them. So the best method is to find scientific articles, studies, research, documentaries from serious publications and institutions, sources of reliable and respectable information that will actually form a deep understanding and belief that our behavior has to change right now. Um, but how do we cultivate a healthy fear that doesn't lead to, like, panic and anxiety and paralysis? 
So an unhealthy fear or paranoia stems from the fear of something that we believe our behavior either cannot reduce or that can only be solved by a behavior that is impossible for us to do or too difficult. This leads to analysis paralysis or anxiety, overwhelm, all of which lead to inaction, which we clearly do not want. According to numerous scientific models, fear appeals work to change behaviors only when accompanied by efficacy messages. So in order to cultivate a healthy fear that leads to actual action and change, we must genuinely believe that one, a different behavior will reduce the threat, and that two, we are actually capable of carrying out that behavior. This is also why it's crucial to get our information from credible research or sources that provide tangible, realistic steps and actions we can take to reach our goals and solve a certain problem. Otherwise, we will simply be paralyzed and overwhelmed and again, not take any action. Okay, okay, this is all wonderful but how do we actually apply fear motivation to generic goals like getting healthier or breaking our social media addiction? Give me tangible steps, Estella. Let's go over two examples of very common or popular goals, which are just being healthy and not spending hours and hours scrolling on social media or watching Netflix. So the first thing we do is we need to break down each goal, habit, lifestyle, dream into behaviors because ultimately Ultimately, that's really all they are. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. So for instance, if you don't know exactly what you need to do to be a healthy person, then you would conduct research and make a specific list of certain actions you would need to take. So now that we know the actions we need to take, in order to motivate ourselves to actually start today and not keep putting this off every single year, we need to research the negative consequences of not completing these actions or habits or behaviors on a regular basis. So for example, we could analyze research articles about the effects of social media and context switching on our focus and attention spans, or read books like Dopamine Nation or Social Media Anxiety and Addiction, which all discuss the dangers and mental health issues that can stem from overusing social media and the internet. The goal here is to start realizing that even when we're wasting time on social media, it's not just a completely harmless activity. When it comes to health, we can watch documentaries on the havoc junk food wreaks on our bodies, the dangers of too much sitting, and the issues dehydration causes. So once I realized not only the benefits of drinking water, but also the consequences of not drinking water, I was finally able to start making drinking water a habit and a regular part of my day. And Liquid IV, the sponsor of today's video, makes hydration that much easier since drinking just one hydration multiple Supplier, hydrates you two times faster and more efficiently than water alone. So right after I'm done with an intense workout, I put one of Liquid IV's hydration multipliers into my water so I can replenish my electrolytes as it has three times the electrolytes of a typical sports drink. The hydration multipliers come in numerous flavors and overall it's a great tasting electrolyte drink mix made with clean ingredients and packed with five essential vitamins, vitamin C, B3, B5, B6, and vitamin B12. So just tear, pour, shake, and in one drink, you get your vitamins for the day. You get water, of course, and on top of that, two times faster hydration than water alone. So if you want to try these hydration multiplier flavors, click the link down below or use my code study to success for 20% off plus free shipping. So yeah, we continue on consuming this information and basically mildly brainwashing ourselves until we start to deeply believe that these negative consequences are really, really bad and kind of ruining our life and we want to avoid them at all cost. So how do we know when we've done enough research? So once we feel a deep, strong drive to drop everything and change our behavior right now, we've done enough and will likely only need to use fear mode motivation and more research when we hit low points or really feel like quitting in the future. Again, the goal here is to immerse ourselves in the researcher information until we feel a compelling need and understanding that it's important to take action today. Because if you know how to make yourself feel that way today, today becomes two days, becomes two weeks, becomes two months, becomes two years. If every day we can answer the simple question, why must I do this habit or action now instead of 
tomorrow. We're pretty much good to go because with each step we take, we see just how much further we are from those undesired consequences and suddenly every single step and day matters. Again though, of course, we don't want to constantly live in negativity or fear. We just want to use this when we realize, hey, it's New Year's or my birthday again and I've had this goal on my list of things to do for five plus years. Fear motivation serves as that extra push we need to take action and then positive motivation just helps us enjoy the journey more and cultivate more positive feelings for what we're doing in the moment. And of course, the final step is that once we have that motivation, we need to choose one realistic first step based on the research, such as cutting out sugary drinks and instead drinking water, or walking 20 minutes a day, or reducing screen time to three hours a day. And if it's too much in the beginning, keep simplifying that first step or behavior until it's something you can actually manage to do regularly and consistently. So hopefully by now you guys I see the importance of fear motivation. You're supposed to think about how things could fail if you don't get up and run each morning if your goal is, say, a fitness goal. It turns out to be the best way to motivate toward goal pursuit. In fact, as I mentioned before, there's a near doubling in the likelihood that people will reach goals of any kind when they're constantly thinking about how bad it's going to be if they fail. But yes, the beauty of a healthy dose of fear is that it focuses our brain to see that even inaction has negative consequences. A big issue with positive motivation and only looking forward towards a perfect tomorrow is that it's kind of like looking at the top of a mountain that we want to climb. Sure, we know that the view at the top of the mountain is probably beautiful and amazing, but from the bottom of the mountain, all we truly see is that enormous distance from the peak and how long and hard and dreadful the hike all the way up there will be. So then we naturally get overwhelmed and just want to delay the start of this whole extremely long and arduous hike to tomorrow. But instead, when we realize Realize, oh shoot, there's a bear behind me and I kind of don't want to die today. And then we start speed walking up the mountain instead of constantly looking up and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so far from the top of the peak of the mountain. We keep looking back to where we started and where the bear was. When it comes to our goals, it's really the same thing. When we focus on how far we've come and not just how far we still have to go to achieve our dream life, it can help us praise ourselves for being strong enough to protect ourselves from the perceived threat. And again, and this can actually create a positive feedback motivation loop. Anticipate and think about failure as a mechanism of generating motivation and indeed fear and anxiety so that you lean into the correct behaviors and you lean away from the incorrect behaviors to reach your goal. Absolutely want to reward yourself cognitively by telling yourself, I'm on the right track. I got another week where I accomplished whatever it is that I'm trying to accomplish. So if you've been feeling stuck for years on certain goals and just cannot seem to change no matter how much positive motivation you try, you can treat it as an experiment for just one goal or habit you've been struggling with. And trust me, bro, prepare to be amazed. <laughs> Here. In the bag. Frog prints go on. Live your best life. Da, 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 da.